All right, what's up guys? What's growing on? I just finished a uh, mango class with Dr. Richard Campbell and he's doing class slash tasting with Fruit and Spice Park. So he's working with them on this event. We're here in July or I'm sorry, uh, June 28th or something like that. I'm kind of off on my dates, I'm sure. But towards the end of June, coming up on the beginning of July. So he's going to be doing a little pruning class and I figured I'd share that with you guys and I'll get you some awesome b-roll here of the mango tasting but there's really not much more than that to see so hold tight What's up guys, what's growing on? So I could not miss an opportunity to catch a mango pruning video for you with Richard Campbell. So hope you guys are gonna enjoy this, hold tight. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start pruning this tree now. Um, one of the things I would say is the whole idea that I do in the early life of a tree is I want to have as much branch complexity as possible. The idea of having that complexity is I'll make all my decisions later on. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to, I want to try to have a big bush. I don't want a tree. So if you look on here, these things have flushed twice. They're quite long now. I'm just going to come in here and tip these things like this. When the best time to do this would probably be when these things are not young and uh, green like this, or young and, and soft, but it doesn't matter. I'm standing here, I have the clippers in my hand, so the best time to prune is always when you're in front of the tree and you have some pruners, okay? Uh, there you go. And I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. It is not rocket science. You don't have to think very much. I tip every branch because the way a mango tree blooms, they're terminal bloomers. So every time I make a cut like this, it's going to break buds like three or four on every terminal. So when they do that, I have three or four chances for a bloom and not one. And so this is the way what you're actually doing is mimicking what we do commercially where we use, they use chemicals to do this. Um, but you can do the same thing with your, with your pruning because what it is is the inhibitor for bud break is produced in the roots and it's exported up. So the more buds that you have on a tree, the more the, the lower the concentration of the floral inhibitor is. So basically, if you have one bud, you have 10 units, right? If it was producing 10 units in the roots. You have a, if you have 10 buds, you have one unit. So it, it, this is the way, this is a, a very logical way in order to guarantee yourself fruiting. Some of them I'm cutting a little harder than the others because they've grown more than uh, one flush. Now, What's the latest in the season one? you want to prune as soon as the fruit come off, okay? And, and our friend Jim wanted to make things a little tough, so he put a little bit of a railing here. But this actually, <laughs> <laughs> but this actually, well, it's only half railing. Yeah, but this is nice, so I can get up on top now. So now I can do it without a ladder, right? So. Now, Richard, the big question of these prune, is that another way to create buds for bud grafting and because it'll force these to swell? And then what, two weeks, four weeks of study to use for grafting material? Uh, you time? could. I don't ever try to mix pruning for grafting or pruning for fruiting. That's a different. That's why I don't, uh, we don't do a lot of, we don't do budwood out of our grove because I'm actually pruning for fruit production and the two are kind of, if you wanted to have the perfect tree to use for grafting, you'd actually shear it and let that thing grow back up. 
And then would you tip it again to force these buds? Right. It, it, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I need for some action. Almost. Yeah. I was. I was just going to ask you what you my, did with the. Uh, with the larger branches that might be crossing or, <laughs> well, it, or it, impeding ventilation. Now, now I'm going to tell you that, you got mad at that now That's we have, uh, we have, you can see how brittle this tree is. How bad it's it's so that's why I'm going to lighten these branches up a little bit too. I'm going to try to not fall this time. Blame Jack Miller. Yeah, and you know, part of the problem you can see on these leaves here, you see all the um, powdery mildew that's on them. This variety is very susceptible. I'm hoping the one I'm holding now is not going to break. <laughs> get the other ones from the other side. Now that I have uh, butchered this side of the tree, but you know, it's all right. If it's going to break that easy, it's probably going to break as soon as it has fruit on it too. So now we'll come over to this side. Just do the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> I know that you all are secretly wishing for that. Now you no, see that makes a want. sensational video. No, <laughs> I want you to be around. That. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Tiago fell in the video on Friday. I know he fell in a hole, and I fell in this one. I was just thinking the same <laughs> thing. It happens. As they say, the mango doesn't fall far from the tree. You know. <laughs> And so there you go. I think that's all of that. Now just again, the concept here is now that I've tipped all of those branches, I don't do a lot of uh, shaping on young trees. Even though when I'll do lectures about it, I'll always call it pruning and shaping. On young mango trees, what I'm trying to do is make a mango bush all right and I just want all of these where I made these cuts here I'm gonna break one two three uh, branches one two three and if you multiply that out you'll see that you really really do have a a much greater number of uh, growing points and that makes for um, that'll make a much better chance that you're gonna get earlier fruiting and get more fruiting, all right? So this is what we do on small trees. If I have a tree this big, this is actually the, the mature size of most of the trees in our orchard. Uh, we keep them this big. And we wanna put, if I have a tree this big, how, 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 many, how many fruit do you think I wanna put on that tree if I have a tree that size? Let me give you a hint, 100, 100. Right, 100 to 150 fruit on a tree like this. And the only way you can do that is you have to have a lot of growing points. Because if you don't, you just can't get it. And so That'd we actually... a lot of fruit trees. Yeah, but they can handle it. See, this is what also, and it's what keeps them um, small too. And it also then, the other thing that this does is if you do this kind of pruning, you end up with much less wood and more leaves. Now, if I had the one thing that I would that I would do when I come in here next year, I can already tell you that that branch is gonna come out next year. This branch is already dominating and is starting to get out of control. So I'm gonna take that branch out, which will allow these to fill in their space. So when I do a pruning every, uh, every year, I try to take out about a fourth of the canopy. Hence why I broke that branch out of there. It was not accidental. Put a boom All right. Just making sure. But anyway, no, we would. I, I wouldn't have broken it out because then that was not a choice. Okay, that happened. Um, but we want to, I try to recycle the canopy about every four years. 
So I take out about one major scaffold limb a year and then go through that and, and, and it kind of looks, you'll end up with this hole in your tree for the beginning when you do it, but by the end of the season it fills that in. And that's the only way to make a mango tree. If you don't cut off something drastic on here, these buds here will never break. Mango trees are not good about breaking blind wood. And so you have to, to, you have to do something drastic. So that's why when you do the cut of a, of a thinning cut, you'll take a saw and you'll come in here and you'll thin out that whole branch, which will allow these to break bud for next year. Where, where, is that where you would cut it and then leave a leave? Next year, leave. what I would do is, so this is gonna be a real workhorse for fruiting for me. So I'm gonna cut out this one next year and then it would leave this replacing and this replacing. Or if I really, if this tree is out of control, I'm gonna take that whole thing. It totally depends. But you'd leave that naked wood? Yeah. Okay. The whole thing that you're trying to do also is um, you don't want to, you wanna keep your tree calm, okay? And that's one of the big tricks is not to overly stimulate the tree, okay? You don't want it to grow, you want it to fruit. Fruiting means small trees. Non-fruiting means big trees and you have too much vigor and you're out of control. So are you saying if you take a fourth, that somehow the tree isn't gonna be spurred? But that's why you do a thinning cut. You come in all the way and you get this wood out of here. So the tipping is very good, but it is important as this tree grows to come in here and get some of this wood out because this is where all the energy is stored when it doesn't fruit. So, so I'm unclear in what you said you were going to take out. Both I'll either take, take out year. this next year. So the one that's going up this way. Right. Or this. I'll take one or the other. Where, where would you be cutting it? I would either cut it here next year or I'll cut it here next year. Most, uh, leave a stump? You leave a, all you have to do is you, you leave the collar, which is right there. That collar right there. You can't cut through that collar, but you don't leave a stump like this. This is in, you wouldn't want, this is not what you want there, right? Like that, that was, those were broken out instead of, uh, yeah, instead of cut. Um, you can't do that with this, okay? So I need a saw to, in order to cut that clean. Because what you don't want to do is rip it and all that sort of stuff. Like some people like to do when, like about 10 minutes ago when I was, almost fell. The rail was wet. <laughs> exactly. The sun was in my eyes. Um, and then that's really the, the, the biggest thing on, on mango trees, you don't have to get too too fancy on young mango trees and on big trees you know it's it's a lot more complicated that's why if you can keep the size then it'll uh, then it'll work hmm yeah no nah, that's all right that is about I mean I use I don't use big tools though but but I don't want to take this out this year no. because this thing will go too much yeah will grow too much so I'm gonna we're already about halfway through the season so I would expect to get maybe three more flushes on this tree going into winter. That would be the kind of the ideal. I don't want more than three. When will you see the new shoots coming up? Uh, in this kind of weather? Three weeks. Oh, okay. Two to three weeks. That's, that's, that's and when should we fertilize? I don't fertilize mango trees with any commercial nitrogen. I use only worm castings uh, or organic sources. Whatever you do, lower, 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 lower nitrogen. That I know. Yeah. And so I don't, I have honestly never put any commercial nitrogen on our trees. Um, and I actually don't even use worm castings on big established trees that are fruiting. I, if they're healthy and they're fruiting, that's fine. So like a Fairchild tree, those things... They, they grow, they're so efficient at finding nitrogen, you don't need to fertilize them, except with some micros or... Since I had that problem where we think some roots were ripped, uh, does it need what, a potassium or anything in it? No. no. Just leave it alone. Let water, it alone, water. get the air pockets out, water. and you're fine. Mm -hmm. What about some natural manure? You gotta be real careful with manures on mango trees because they will, uh, if they got to be very, very mature, you know, uh, otherwise they'll the burn. Old manure, yes. yeah. Yeah, old. Be, yeah. And you got to be careful for sources. 
chicken manure is okay, so, but you gotta really, you gotta really run that. That's why I run that through my my worms. Let the worms work on it a while, and you can it's very acidy soften too, so that out. Right. Yeah, um, and then but How horse. About Huh? I'm sorry, you're about to say Horse manure is great, except um, a lot of times they have associated uh, contaminants. Oh, right. Hormones, stuff like that. Yeah. Or uh, arsenic that, that were in the arsenicals that were used for the flies, for fly control. If you get them out of a stable, you got to be careful. Also, yeah. Huh? Deworming also. Right. Okay. Any of that any stuff. Of that you know, I don't want any of that stuff in my trees. So okay. you, that's another thing that gets a little tricky. All right, guys, another awesome vi video with Dr. Campbell. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, pounder.